Okay. Alors, est-ce que ça marche? Ok. Alors, is everybody is everybody here? Is the, the sound and image good? Some technical problems, but I hope everything's good. J'espère que tout est bon pour vous. J'ai deux trois petits, deux trois petits problèmes techniques, mais j'espère que tout le monde voit bien. Ok, donc tout le monde est là. Alors, I hope you're all good, guys. So, I want to say first of all. Happy New Year 2021. I hope it will be full of joy, music and good vibes. And uh, uh, I just would like to know uh, how many of you uh, speak English, French or Spanish? Combien y en a d'entre vous qui parle qui parle anglais, français, espagnol? Uh, juste pour savoir um, juste pour savoir quelle langue je vais privilégier pour le direct. Solamente para saber si voy a hablar inglés, francés o español. A lot of English. A lot of English. Ok, les trois, bravo, ils mec sont trilingues. Ok. Maybe I will stop. A mix, a mix of English and French. Ok, Spanish. Spanish, ok. I will try to make a, a mix. Um, voy a intentar hacer un mix de los tres idiomas a ver si, si, hay, al, si hay algunos que no entienden pues que me, que me piden sin problema bueno the first good news is uh, I received so much messages since the, the first live I made uh, I decided to keep all the live all the live sessions I will do so I will try, I don't know, but to, to make a lot of lives like this. Uh, maybe every, every Sundays, who knows, if I am free and available to do this, I promise I will do as many practice sessions I can. So here we start, so let's tune our guitars. <laughs> d'écho ou de son Is there any, anybody that have sound problems Très mauvaise réception. with some tuner or just a uh, uh, diapason we have we we really need to to have this one good just the, the a the fifth the fifth string then we can tune the six the harmonics are just but the unison okay so this is right then the fourth For the for the third, just use the, the fifth. On utilise juste des quintes pour accorder la troisième corde or the octava. Okay, then natural fifth or natural octava. Okay, this is good. And then to tune the second, just make a unison octavas. Hi. 
this octava um, D and D is always a little bit tricky. But at the end, I hope we all have a good results. So here we'll start and just I forget um, to do a little bit of shaping nails. So I always give the same the same advices to people. So just put your nails on the on the fill. Vous mettez juste euh, l'ongle euh, sur le sur la sur la lime and you just do the movement on the same angle you, when you play the strings. Vous faites vraiment le même le, le même angle que quand vous jouez les cordes. Donc never like this, never like this because the strings uh, don't go this way of the nail. So please don't shape the part of your nail you are not using to play because we need it because the nail has to accompany the, the movement of the string in a very natural way. For this reason, you know, I don't, I don't know if you see, uh, here is the camera, so I have pretty big nails, you know, so if I don't shape them in the correct way, I will really lose, um, I will really lose a lot of energy uh, to play guitar. So, a lot of you ask me my shape nails, so I just wanted to to say, um, I can show them to you, but it will naturally change a lot of things uh, because these nail shapes are the consequence of my position, which is mine because we all have different uh, shape. We all we have different hands, arms. You know, if you are if you have a little arm, you know, you will play more like this. If you have a big, big arm, you will play. Every everything will be different. So, the the nail is the end of the consequence of a lot of things. You know, uh, the 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 height of your cho shoulder, then your arm, then your hand, the position. So, just find find a natural position here. Okay, just relax the hand, and this is your natural position. And then just just practice like this. Very very relaxed and you really have to ha have a good sensation, relax sensation and then record the sensation of the strings against your, your skin and feel the nail just according to the, the positions of the string. So never like this, never like this. Otherwise, you will have some sound, nail sound, or you you will then we, we see a lot of guitarists trying to to have the wrong part of the nail, so they try to play like this, but then you put a lot of tensions on your hand. So I always try to avoid that, even more because I play both flamenco and classical guitar all my life. So nails always have been a big problem for me but now with this solution it's okay I can play really really flamenco sound and classical sound with this technique of filling the, the nails um, so once it's done of course do your own um, your own uh, Shaping, of course, I really advise to to use uh, big fills, like strong one, like this. This one is very strong. Then you go thinner and thinner. J'espère tout le monde comprend. Hein? Désolé. Donc toujours commencer par les limes avec des gros grains et après petit à petit vous vous passez à des limes un peu plus fines. And the final final step, touche finale. Si vous avez du papier, les guitaristes classiques qui connaissent ça normalement. Et les flamenco pas trop. So classical guitar players really know this kind of paper, but not all the flamenco players. And then it's just to add a finishing touch. Just uh, so this is this changes everything: the sound, but also your sensation. And now I hope for everybody it's good. <laughs> Okay, so when you ship your nails, just uh, 
try to play a little bit relaxed and quick just to see if the nails are not um, too long or if there is uh, no parts who are um, uh, disturbing you, you know? So, my nails are a little bit long because I didn't play so much because of course it was Christmas and everything and uh, I was in my family so I guess you too, I hope you too. So I didn't have so much time to play guitar so my, my, my nails are pretty long actually. I love to play usually with a little bit, uh, li little, little bit shorter than these, these nails. En général, j'aime jouer avec des, longs, des ongles un peu plus courts que cela, mais bon. So, it's what I have today. The thing is, I, I always advise when you want to... Um, um, when you want to have... Um, when you try to, to have different nail shape, uh, shapes, um, do it little by, step by step each day, you know, because if you change, if it's a big change, your, your fingers will be lost. So I really advise um, if you need to play with uh, shorter nails, for example, just fill them step by step, uh, little step by little step each day. It will be better. Then you, you will get used to it in order to do it like strong one. So we are ready, we are tuned, the nails are done. So a lot of people asked me to practice some picado and arpeggios. So um, here we go. I propose to start with arpeggios. So I will, we will just uh, practice some arpeggio, the, the very simple one. We'll take an E minor and just do the, the ascending and descending arpeggios. Okay? And we'll just, we, we will just play. So the movement is uh, P, uh, how do we say in English? So, uh, thumb, index, middle finger, ring finger, middle finger, index, and we and we come back with the the sum. So the idea is then to play those basses all the time. Okay, so we'll just start without metronome. Okay, Th then we will study a little bit with metronome. So just we will start with the slow movement. flamenco guitar, your son has to play down stroke, rest stroke, sorry. Donc là, jouer en buté, hein, si c'est de la guitare flamenca que vous faites, jouer en buté le pouce, si c'est du classique, vous pouvez jouer en passé. So, really be careful about your rhythm and your sound and your sensation. simple exercise because it works the, 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 the different arpeggios. So for those who knows it, uh, I would like to train, uh, when, when I have time, I train arpeggios exercises with the chords of Villalobos, the first study. So um, if you don't know, know this one, just stay on the E minor or just practice it with the, the, the strings uh, palms. And for those who know the, the first study of Villalobos, we will practice some um, this study with metronome. Also. 
Here is 130. Okay, and we'll try to keep this speed uh, all the during all the the study. Okay, so one, two, three, four. We can increase the speed for those who want. Um, take it, take it, take it. Okay, so this is 160. Maybe let's try 170. Take it, take it, take it. Or 180. Yeah, this way is nice. Okay, let's try it and then we will practice picado. So, um, if you don't know this study, this is this is really cool. So I haven't been practicing guitar for many days, and my studios are a little bit cold because I just I just uh, came back yesterday. So here we go from for some arpeggios. One, two, three, four. Sorry, one. So the name of this study, this study is the study number one by Hector Villalobos. Ça c'est l'étude numéro un, enfin la grille des accords de l'étude numéro un de Villalobos. So the good news is, I would like to make a lot of videos about Villalobos and make also some master classes about them because this is a great uh, present uh, Villalobos made for us, guitar, classical guitarist, I mean guitarist in general. Uh, the twelve studies and the five preludes. Preludios, prelude, are really beautiful. I think uh, every classical guitarist uh, should play and study these pieces. So we practice uh, we practiced uh, some arpeggio. Uh, uh, are people, uh, those people have some questions about arpeggios right now before we start practicing picado? Como compañía sola, borbulería. Vale, vale, vale. Entonces. Vamos a trabajar un poco de, de compás luego, sin problema. Um, three finger picado. Uh, three, finger, three finger picados are really nice, you know, for it depends uh, on which context you have. If you have to play Monasterio de Sal by Paco de Lucia, 
Of course, you have to practice the, the three fingers um, picados, you know, but in general, uh, for, for a regular situation, uh, I think it's best to, to practice the regular picado. Uh, and the picado arpeggio like Vicente Amigo, yes, it's, uh, it's a nice sound. Very strong, very strong, so of course, the thing is, all of those techniques are very nice, uh, but this is, um, it's a special sound, it's a special sound, so you, you, you can practice them uh, if you play Vicente Amigo's pieces, of course, uh, if you play uh, some arpeggio when you want to have this sound. Of course, if you want to have this sound, you have to practice, uh, you have to play uh, the picado arpeggio technique, you know, but in the normal situation. Of course, just play the normal. Um, Arpeggio. Alors, en fait, ça c'est donc en français. Donc pour ceux qui connaissent pas ces, ces arpèges là, en fait, c'est juste des arpèges. Et en fait, chaque doigt il va être appuyé. So each fingers of this for this technique for the people who who may not um, know this technique. So each finger is rest stroke. So mostly uh, uh, Vicente Amigo plays this arpeggio. very powerful uh, arpeggio of course but in other pieces I really recommend to not specially use this technique because it costs a lot of energy and uh, uh, you know it depends on uh, which piece you're playing so we will uh, continue with uh, picado picado so we just will start uh, practicing the the chromatic one and we'll start very quiet, very easy at, let's say, here is 80. Okay, we will start with, on va commencer avec des croches, just half notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The chromatic one, we start with index, okay? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. just to concentrate on the, the position of the fingers. So most of the time, if I play the, the, the strings one, two, three, four, uh, my thumb is always resting on the sixth string. But of course, when I arrive on the bass strings, my thumb is on the table of the guitar. Okay, very important. So uh, for les picado, vraiment, il y a toujours le pouce, soit qui repose sur la sixième corde, soit sur la table quand on arrive dans, dans les, les cordes du bas. Ok On va euh, continuer. Le même exercice. Maintenant, on va faire... Euh, we will stay at the same speed, so, but I would like to, to, to work with you some scales. So. We will play the, the flamenco one, the Phrygian one, which is all the natural notes on the guitar. So, E, F, G, A. a little chromatism then we arrive on the index 
uh, on the first fret and then I would like you to play the same scale but uh, on the first fret. Okay, like a F Phrygian, okay? So one, if I speak uh, one fingering, one, two, three, four. Donc si je vous donne le doigté, un, deux, trois, quatre, it's one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, just one, three, one, two, four, and one, two, four again. And descending, so, uh, sorry, four, two, one, four, two, one, three, one, four, three, one, four, three, one, and four, two, one. Uh, so, and of course, wh when we finish, sorry, um, four, three, one, four, three, and one, but we slide, okay? And then we write and we do the same thing um, on the second fret, okay? So then we, you will master all the. You will master all the neck. So the idea is. Um, Maybe let, let's practice it. Let practice it uh, without metronome. We will start slowly and increasing the speed while we are um, playing uh, all the the neck. So my idea is always to arrive at the 14th fret in Taranto. Okay. So we go. We start on the E. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. to say so we, we really play index and uh, middle finger and never repeat the fingers okay sorry one two three four Sensing the, the, the finger. So we start on the 13th, okay? Wagataka, taka, 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 e. Thank you. 
So, normally it hurts. Okay. <laughs> Normalement, vous pouvez avoir un peu mal. So, of course, you don't have to hurt yourself. Please, 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 please. Uh, I did it almost at my limit, you know, because... So, this is an exercise which mix, uh, mixes um, knowledge of the neck and, uh, of course, uh, endurance. Okay, donc ça, c'est un exercice qui mélange euh, vraiment connaissance du manche, apprentissage de cette forme-là de gamme phrygienne et, évidemment... Uh, endurance. So, um, so just when when you finish practice, like a thing, of course, relax your your hands. Uh, then, so this is a Tai Chi movement, which is not very it's a bit funny. It's uh, just a, a down and up and down. But this is the best movement I know to relax uh, tension of the hands for musicians. So this is a Tai Chi movement. Okay, so like this. Like this. Ah, so I couldn't find the first one. Um, the idea is just relax. Be nice with yourself. This is my wish for 2021. Be nice with yourself. So I I love to 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 go until the. So this is the the fourth the fourteenth fret. Sorry. Okay, the 12th is here, and I love to go to the the 14th fret, which is a F sharp. Okay, c'est un fa dièse là sur là. Why? Uh, because in flamenco we have a lot of um, pieces in taranta in F sharp flamenco. So it's nice to to master uh, this part of the guitar, which is not so easy. So you just really help. Help you with the sum. The interest of uh, work of uh, working this part of the guitar is your fingers, your hand has to find his own position, his own way to to practice this part of the guitar. You know, even for improvisation, for all the kind of things. Um, Nails, we talked, uh, we talked about it uh, earlier, and yes, the, this video will stay on my YouTube channel. Um, okay, nice. So now we, so we just uh, concentrate, uh, we just concentrated on the endurance, on this exercise. Um, now we will talk a little bit about speed. Okay, so now we. Did will take the metronome uh, and because we want to focus on speed we just come back to the the chromatic scale okay so we will start with 80 one two three four one two three four one two M find your own speed but always be careful about the rhythm the regularity of the rhythm um, and also the sound you know the quality of your sound and the regularity of the sound you know all the melodic line has to be very flat da, 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 da. not da, 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 something like that because you when you play a piece you know you really need your fingers to uh, to be really if you if you have to play a long phrase then you can choose uh, to put accents but this is another work so it was this was 80 let's go to 90 e Sorry, uh, 100, 2, 3, 4. 
sure your, your sensations are good. If the speed is already a little bit hard for you, there is no problem. Just practice at your own speed. The thing is, I really want you to have good sensations. This is so important, you know. If you play, if you play fast but not so good, this is not interesting, you know. So really take care about quality, not the amount of speed you can play. So here is 110. One, two, three, four. the question uh, I use the metronome to play quarter notes so one two three four 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 okay so four notes by bit this is the idea one two three four okay so here is one hundred and twenty one two three four <laughs> you know because when you if you, you 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 block the energy of your body and so when you play the energy has to flow you know so okay music is music has to be uh, very fluid easy and uh, nice to see and listen. So here is 130, one, two, three, four. Okay, nice. So if you feel some tension, just relax. Also, think always about all your body, you know, neck, shoulders, arms, and hands and stuff, you know. It's not about just your fingers playing, it's all, it's all of you which is playing guitar, you know, all, the, all your body. So, um, relax, breathe, practice yoga, you know, whatever makes you feel good, sport, exercises. Um, Push-ups, I don't know. Everything is good for you. And nothing... Okay, so this is always... So I'm, I'm showing you the traditional flamenco picado, you know? Of course, you can practice it in a lot of different ways. And this is index and middle finger, index major. My favorite guitarist. <laughs> I know this is the... the answer of all the flamenco guitarists in the world. You know, I, I don't know if I have to, to answer this question. So, 140. One, two, three, four. <laughs> start a little bit challenging ourselves. This is 150. Who do you like besides Paco? Yeah, so much people. In Flamenco, Tomatito, Vicente Amigo, Gerardo Núñez, Manolo Sanlúcar, Dani Morón, Diego del Moral, Moraito. So much people. Okay. 
And of course, besides flamenco, so many people, so many people. Oh, Yamandu Costa, I don't know, this, there is, yeah, Antonio Rey, of course, of course, Antonio Rey is crazy. One of the most incredible guitar player music ever known. So, here is 150. One, two, three, four. <laughs> maximum speed when I was uh, uh, younger, I believe you should listen. Yeah, uh, Django Reinhardt, of course, uh, Wes Montgomery, I don't know, <laughs> Pat Metheny, uh, there is so much, it's crazy, it's crazy. No, uh, Savikas, Savikas used to say in, a, in an interview which I, I really like, um, because used to say, today all the guitarists play good, you know, all the guitarists. He, what he used to say, all of you, you play wonderful. Just my, adv my advice is just what you play, just play it good. Just play the, the best you can play. So this is amazing because, of course, today with internet, with YouTube and stuff, <laughs> it's so easy to learn a, a lot of things. Um, how how long uh, did it take to reach? So it's not about um, it's not about how many how much time uh, you know. Some people they will play naturally at this speed. Some people will never reach this speed. But we don't care. You know, we just care. We just focus about do it well. Then the speed is a consequence according to your capacities according to your um, abilities you know, then we we all have different hands uh, hands fingers and stuff so uh, about the beat you know it's you can count it's one two three four one two three four one there is no really uh, it's not a measure this is a technical exercise it's just count it one two three four one two three four just it's a, just an exercise here we go, 160, my friends. One, two, sorry. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Challenging. So, just to, to have an idea, at this pin we are approaching the level of Paco de Lucia in uh, most of his pieces like uh, La Barrosa, Monasterio de Sal. Uh, of course, when he plays uh, three pieces, um, I mean without rhythm, uh, it's even more faster, you know. Uh, but just, it's, it's good to know, to control when, when with metronome, what is your maximum speed and then of course you can, you can determine it, um, which, which piece can you play, you know, for example, if, if your picado um, is not so fast, please do not try it, or oh, at home of course, because this is nice, but if you have to play on stage and stuff, don't try to play uh, like uh, all the, the pieces with big picado scales because uh, just be conscious about uh, how fast can you play and just play pieces. You know, there is so many wonderful guitar pieces without picados. So, um, yes, I will teach all my compositions, but in other videos, uh, in other masterclass, will the CD will be released. Why are you cleaning your fingers? Uh, no, I'm just relaxing my hands. I'm not cleaning. <laughs> I'm not cleaning. I'm just, I'm just relaxing. Okay, let's 
go to 170 for the some for the crazy people here. So I have to raise the volume of the metronome because here is loud. Because the thing is, of course, while increasing spin, sometimes we increase the strength or so, and uh, so it increases the volume. One, two, three, four. play like La Barrosa or a lot of pieces um, of Paco. Okay, then just to have some fun, uh, let's let's try 180, which is like a kind of kind of very high speed, you know. La meilleure tenue de la guitare, la meilleure position, ça c'est vraiment vous. Ça c'est vraiment vous. On a tous un corps différent et c'est à vous de, de poser la guitare. Et juste d'être de la tenir de la manière la plus naturelle, poser vos doigts. Il y a, il y a des règles générales. Les règles générales, c'est pour la, pour la main gauche, on essaie de garder le, le pouce toujours à peu près en face du majeur et, et au milieu du manche. Et ici, toujours la, le, le, le pouce enflammé quand je parle là, et toujours le pouce sur la sixième corde et, et relâche. Voilà. Après, on est tous différents. Et si voy a, voy a hacer muchos videos, muchos masterclasses um, de, de, de flamenco, de muchas cosas. Voy a hablar de esto al final de este video. So, let's try 190, ok? 1, Talking. So, if this happens, whatever the speed, no, speed is not important. Speed is a consequence of your daily work. So, if you reach a speed, uh, it's not uh, your playing is not perfect. You know, just please go down. So, for my in this situation, in this situation, I just go down, very down. You know, like uh, 150. <laughs> c'est que si, si je perds du volume sonore c'est peut-être à cause du métronome qui est très fort là il est très fort je vais baisser le je vais baisser un plat so if you reach a speed which is uh, and your not your playing is not perfect according to the the rhythm and the sound and stuff just please uh, go to a coolest speed um, <laughs> So this is it for Picado, and uh, so nice. If you have some questions, I don't know, but maybe we can uh, start to practice some compass. Um, maybe solea, solea compass. Can I know how your guitar string tension? So same for string tensions. Um, string tensions. I play medium tension because this is good for me. Just try your strings and uh, um, just choose the one which is good for you. Um, Est-ce que c'est bon de monter de 5 en 5 ou de 10 en 10? So this is, you, you choose, uh, tu, tu peux choisir. Moi j'aime bien uh, de 10 en 10, on sent la différence, mais de 5 en 5 c'est très bien aussi. Alors, um, about the, yes, some, some as poids if you want, so just, I will, I will just, um, can you, ah, the picado, slow, okay, here we go.
so this kind of movements. So for our sapo, I will just give you uh, one, one, one exercises. Let's take an E major. So just the mov the basis movement. So which is so just uh, thumb, then up. Sorry, down and up. Okay. One. practice this one to, to start one two three and you have to see your thumb like um, you really have to when you work slowly you really have to exaggerate a little bit the movement one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. of course in the speed this is not so much but the idea is your hand has to go out of the guitar one then you change the string, you hit the fifth, one, two, three, then the fourth, one, two, three, then the third, one, two, three, then the second. You just only have one string, so you come back to the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Okay, so I just practice a little bit this one. Sorry, the accent would be on the on the down the the sum when it goes down. Sorry. So, or or maybe if you, just for technical exercises, just focus on the the three movements. One, to work this exercise because it's you have to be really precise uh, to have all of this those things so let's go for some compass so yeah so we just we just enter into the the compass of solar one two three four five six seven eight nine 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, The beats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Un, If you want, just play the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So on this compass, we will play. Just uh, in E major, okay? So we'll. Oh, fuck. Huh. It's uh, a nice. Uh, I don't have electricity anymore. I hope my girlfriend, which is here, will solve the problem. Uh, so. <laughs> this is really funny. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, so, the idea is. <laughs> uh, let's continue anyway. So, we will hit the. Uh, so on the third beat, you will play a F, and on the tenth beat, we we will come back on the tenth. So it will it will be one two three four. Sorry, twelve one two three four five six seven eight 
4, 5, 6, Okay, so the thing is, um, some people asked me how to um, how to play with flamenco metronome. I don't like to play with flamenco metronome, um, like a, a sort of clock who would do tick 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 tick. So because you never play in the real life, you don't play with this. So I really advise my my advice is, for example. Uh, I really like no, sorry yes. And I really like to play, for example, with the metronome. So let's. This is one hundred and twenty. So I was improvising, so I cannot show you the, the percussions. But I will do some videos about the basics of solia and stuff. So this is one hundred and twenty. There is no compass, you know. The compass has to be inside you, you know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, Strong bits like the twelve, sometimes the th the three, um, almost always the six, eight, and ten. Of course, so twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In this case, I don't play the golpes on the eight and ten because I'm doing rasgio and and thumb. So it really depends on what you are playing, but 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I, I did the rasgio, which has a golpe at the end. Difference between alegrias and solar. So uh, the 12 bits, the, 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 the compass of 12 tiempos, of 12 bits, um, it's um, the same, you know, we use it for alegrias, for all of continuas, for solea, solea por bulerias, for a lot of things, for romances, for buleria when it's, when it's, um, uh, it depends. Bulerias is the most complicated uh, compass in, uh, in uh, flamenco. Uh, but um, in flamenco you have the, the 12 bits family, 
then the then the the four bits family then the th the three bits family and then the um, and then the sigiriya which is very specific it's I, it's actually the roots of 12 bits but we can't in five in sigiriya it's a little bit strange we practiced one two three four and five one two three four and five but of course the the real mathematical counting would be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Twelve bit, it's it's twelve bit, but we traditionally we count it in five. Un, do, tres, cuatro, y cinco. Un, do, tres. So it's what we do, but we have to understand it's one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And the solea starts in the middle of this cycle. Solea is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. So this is and this is way of counting flamenco, but then uh, a lot of musicians in flamenco don't really use the the beats, you know, for uh, for counting. But of course, when you work with other musicians, with uh, flamenco dancers, for example, of course, it's very convenient to to count the beats in the same way because you you really win some time. Uh, for example, when I uh, when I arrived in Paris. I played with a lot of uh, African musicians, you know, people from Senegal, from Mali, and uh, they are they, they are crazy, crazy groovers, uh, musicians. And uh, w w it, it was very funny because when I I always asked uh, which is the first beat, and each musician had his own answer. <laughs> so, you know. uh, but it works, you know, it works. But in flamenco. The, the rhythms are complex, so so it's best to know how to count in, uh, in a traditional way. Uh, so do you have guys some questions? Sorry, I, I see a lot of questions in the, the chat. I try to, to grasp them all. Um, do you want to practice, to keep practicing with metronoma maybe? Uh, let's, the volume was very, so this is 120. So just we'll, we'll start practicing some buleria. Uh, buleria, for example, at uh, let's let's practice that a nice speed. Um, that would be two hundred, for example. So buleria. I think if you start to the twelve bits counting works if you play the. the regular compass of course it works with 12 but then when you go to uh, accompaniment of singers when you go to falsetas just count in three or two you know generally three but two in intense woman what I mean I will try to to illustrate it with the with my finger so when you play compass of course it's one two three one two three one two one two one two one two three one two three one two one two one two So of course in this case you can count twelve but then if you go for example
So you can't you can't say you are in 12 anymore. Of course, it would it would it would works, but believe me, here we are just in one two. Because if you start to counting 12 bits, um, you will get lost uh, because in this kind of um, buleria, yes, it's more you will you will rem you will uh, end the rhythm uh, in the middle of the compass, so it will be strange. And so in some falsettas, you you will even um, cut the compass at the beginning. So buleria, you 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 have to feel it, you know. Uh, it's not like uh, Solea or Sigiria, the compass never moves, but in Buleria it's more flexible, you know. Um, in Jerez, for example, the August play, they will play is uh, a two. One, two, one, two, one, two. feeling of Jerez is because the counts one two one two one two so if you want to play in the style of Jerez you have to play with this kind of counting then when you play other bulerias it's better to to play the three beats you know if you if you start to play some falsetas like It's always changing between three and two, depending on what effect do you want to create. Because uh, when you play one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, it's very relaxed. So when you count in three. It's like everything is going, but then at the end, during the remate, we are counting in two because it gives more uh, power, more intensity to the compass. So generally, during all the falsetta, you, you, your feet goes in three, and in, during the remate, it goes in one, two, one, two, one, two. So you have, and believe me, Never stop playing the feet, otherwise you will get lost in, in buleria. So, one, two, three, one. Vicente Amigo composes bulerias in six, in three, in two, you know, it's, there is no rule. And I don't think Vicente Amigo is thinking about counting the buleria when he composes. So, buleria, it's, it's a flow, it's a kind of rhythm. You can play, you can play. For example, if you play, uh, so uh, you know it's it's nice to da -dum, da -da -da -dum, to counting in two, but then when you play I was counting in three, and then at, during the remate, I started uh, beating all the, the the two the two beats. So, buleria is the more complex compass in the flamenco because it's changing all the time, and uh, 
But the, the, the palmas will always be the same. Almost, you know, but this, um, this palmas will work all the time. Whatever speed it is. And you have to train um, to know how does it how does it go to the with the the, the foot, for example. If it's uh, if it's three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, ta -ta -tum, ta -tum, ta -ta -tum. This is the more the easiest way. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. But then one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Two, one. So this is Jerez, you know, this kind of palmas with the two beats uh, with the feet, this is totally Jerez. Okay, and then I don't change what I'm doing on the palmas, but this is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you will notice the first beat we give with the feet. We don't play it with palmas, either with guitar. You know, the first beat we give on the feet, uh, if you play, if you beat the feet, uh, then it will be very easy to play with palmas and all the people because all our feet are like this. Then palmas and guitar will play different things, but the feet is here, always. Two, three, one, two, three. So this is a way. So for this, for this reason, I really recommend you to use a metronome, simple metronome to work at home. That allows you to change the way you are. Uh, beating the buleria, okay? And then, um, if you want to practice with more uh, realistic sensations, then go on YouTube and search for uh, solo compasses. You know, like, uh, it's not metronome, it's not, uh, but it's uh, solo compasses, like uh, uh, sometimes uh, people just uh, took uh, some, some palmas from an album and they make a loop with that. But uh, uh, I recommend you a YouTube channel of my percussionist Juan Manuel Cortez, which is um, the, the percussionist with which I am working in all my projects, all my albums, and he's one of the most talented uh, flamenco percussionists I know. He's making uh, incredible arrangements, and he has a YouTube channel Juan Manuel Cortez. If you if you search in YouTube uh, Juan Manuel Cortez uh, flamenco. Um, in his YouTube channel, he put everything, uh, buleria, tangos, jaleos, tientos, rumbas, everything, everything. He did it all by himself and uh, it's, it's perfect. You will find some uh, just uh, palmas and some with palmas, djembe, other stuff. So it's very, very, very nice. Uh, you, in general, you have two speed, you have like a low speed and a normal speed. So it's really nice. So I think you should practice with metronome and um, also with real compass. So of course the best thing, if, if you know some friends who are practicing palmas, uh, the thing is, of course the best is to, to, to go to play with them, but if you have no many friends that can play palmas and stuff, so go to the YouTube channel of my friend Juan Manuel Cortez. Um, so, do you have some other questions about buleria? I don't know, or how do you practice? Maybe let's let's practice a little bit of bulerias if you don't have some questions. Est-ce qu'il faut se chanter le compas? Non, je pense pas non. Alors. For other technical uh, stuff, we could practice it in the next sessions, and I will do also pedagogical videos. So, 
let's practice some bulerias. Let's count one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So, a nice thing to know when you are playing with other musicians, uh, of course, if you have um, if you have a lot uh, of guitarists playing, the best thing to do is this compass, which we call it sordo. the first uh, string, the chord, sorry, so the first will be the A flamenco, one, three and two, and then the B flat, one, three and four, and the nothing on the third string. So we will practice one, two, three, one, two, three. finger, your index or your middle finger, and then rasguillo, so this one is one, two, three, four, five, so the first finger starts on the, on the, on the ground, and we finish with the, the index up. So if we count the compass in 12 bits, then you, you will understand, it's always changing the chords on the third beat and coming back to the the the, the basic chord uh, on the tenth beat. So it's 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 9, 10. If you, want, if you really want to go on the buleria, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One, two, three, four. Just to understand, but then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay? So keep that. So let's start some variations. I'm staying here. So the idea is <coughs> one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I can make some variations, but when I come back to the uh, regular compass, please switch with me. I mean, um, play with me. See, even um, even if you don't know the falsetta or stuff, <coughs> at the end you have to play with me the compass. For example.
you will realize Buleria is way more difficult to follow than Solea because Solea it's always always a 12 bit but then Buleria it's it's really more free so when uh, someone starts a letra, a letra or a falsetta you don't know you don't know uh, how will we how it will be counting on you don't know how and when it will finish and stuff so Buleria is very very complicated for for this reason I really um, recommend you to, to practice the bass of compass and the bass is this one like I do it so this is the movement so it's we have a legato galpe then you, you change so it's one two three one two three and then one So, the idea, one, two, three, we got this, we got this also, one, two, three, then for this moment, we, we will do the, the same thing here, uh, at the right hand, but here, the legato, we will do it, we will play the, and make, come back the first finger, uh, the golpe. And then we will finish with the rasgio. One, two, three, four, five. So. So we have plenty of uh, different compasses in flamenco, but um, this one, this one for me, for my opinion. Is the most is one of the most easier uh, the, one of the easiest compasses to play, and it works in modern flamenco and in and also in old school flamenco. For example, in old school flamenco, with more gold pace sometimes, you know. But in terms of the, the playing the, the chords, it's the same thing, and also in a fl modern flamenco. Pass works with all the speeds. And most of all, it's not um, a very heavy compass if you have to repeat it like 10 times, you know. It's very light, it's very easy um, because. For example, there is one very famous variation of compass by Paco de Lucia, which is a... Which is, of course, very cool, like all the stuff Paco de Lucia did was very awesome. But if you repeat it all the time... You feel like, like if the CD has a problem, you know, and it comes back and it comes like there is a problem. It's not the best compass uh, to 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 make it like a loop. So this one is. And you can switch directly to falsetta. This 
for me, this compass, this compass is the base of the, the, the flamenco buleria rhythm. Okay, guys. So, I was very happy to, to be with you this afternoon. Uh, I think I will repeat it uh, all the, the Sundays when I can do it, of course. Uh, which uh, in those times I, I don't have so many concerts, so it will be uh, quite easy. And uh, also I wanted to say that I'm working on the online school for many years. Um, so I will, uh, my first uh, flamenco courses will be the basics of flamenco guitars, of flamenco guitar, sorry. So in this course you will have all the basis of flamenco. All you have to need about uh, rasguillos, picados, tremolo, arpeggios and pulgar, asapua, and all the basis of all the flamenco styles we play in flamenco. So buleria, solea, solea por buleria, sigiria, taranta, granaina, uh, zapateado, uh, minera, rondenia, everything we, we, we play. So yeah, improvising. So improvising is another subject. We, uh, I, I will speak, I promise I will speak about improvisation. Tangos are also tientos. So uh, this course will be interesting for the people who want to start guitar because I will speak about, um, uh, I will speak about the basis of each flamenco techniques and styles and harmonies. Um, it will be also interesting for people who already play flamenco but who, who struggle a little bit with the understanding of how everything works and also it will be interesting for people who play good flamenco but who need to have clear basses because the basses is what I work every day. You know, when I practice a picado <laughs> I practice this exercise is the same I would give to a beginning guitar, you know. When I if I if I want to work alegrias, for example, I always practice the bass. So I am always working the basses of flamenco guitar. So I think this is um, this course. I will uh, I will make a video and, uh, and publish it on a website. It's like I worked on it all my life, you know, because I'm giving classes since I'm 14 years old. So this is all. It's a reflection I had of my life. Like what is the basis of what are the basis of flamenco guitar? So and uh, no. The, the course is constructed, it's written, so I'm ready to, 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 to publish it. I, I have to record it, to work on it and to publish it. Also, I will put a lot of master classes about all the videos I will do for YouTube, like Paco de Sia pieces, uh, classical guitar also. I will publish a lot of videos of uh, classical guitar and of course master classes about my compositions. So a lot of stuff. Uh, is coming, so I will try to to keep uh, this practice with Samorito sessions all the Sundays, and I'm working on the online platform when I will publish a lot of different master classes. So, guys, it was a big, big, big pleasure uh, for me to be with you today. It's very important for me to feel the contacts with you. It's very important for me to feel that I am not alone to enjoy flamenco guitar in the world uh, because of course in those times we are not traveling so much and we are not playing in festival and uh, we are not meeting each other so it's very kind of hard you know I miss you I miss you I miss to play on stage I miss I miss to be in contact with you so um, of course internet is not as interesting as meeting you in real life but it's really 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 um, better than anything. So guys, see you next Sunday if it works and take care of you, practice good guitar, have fun, be happy and I love you. Ciao!